All right, my Scorpio friends, how are you today? Scorpio! We're doing the, uh, the Aquarius, Age of Aquarius song, Scorpio style. Scorpio! <laughs> All right, I'll spare you with the singing. All right, so this is your monthly horoscope for April 2020. All right, it's a little bit more calm of a month than the past three months. The, the, you know, the first three months of the year have been pretty intense astrologically. This one seems to calm down a little bit. We've got, you know, um, Venus moving signs on the 3rd. All right, Mercury finally moving out of Pisces on the 12th. And it's zipping through the sign of Aries and entering Taurus on the, what, the 27th. It's flying through the sign of Aries, right? Um, let me show you your chart, show you where everything's at, and we'll get into it. So we've got a lot of third house and fourth house energy, okay? A lot of what's been in your third house last month, you know, has finally moved out here to the fourth. Again, depending on where your sun or your rising is actually at, Um so this still might be your, your third house. But either way, we're transitioning, specifically Mars. You know, Mars is definitely transiting through your third, through your fourth house this month, right? So in the third house here, we have this Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. This is about information, okay? And for you dealing with uh, looking at all of the information, looking at um, connecting with your siblings as well, if you have brothers and sisters, loved ones, uh, connecting with them this month and seeing where, you know, shortcomings, okay, with Jupiter expansion and Pluto being our shadow, okay, we're, we're dealing with having to look at all the information here, okay, and look at oneself and how you are um, giving information, how you are receiving information, okay, and again, your connections with your siblings is really something that's very important this month. Now, as far as Saturn and Mars go, right, moving into your fourth house, uh, we have planetary movement and action, okay, solidification and action moving forward. Now, again, if you are right on the money, rising or sun Scorpio within the first two degrees, Saturn most likely will be entering your fourth house. Otherwise, he's staying there in your third, okay? This is set to zero degree Scorpio. So Saturn will be staying most likely in your third. It's only going to get up to just about two degrees before it retrogrades back into Capricorn. It goes all the way back to 25, 26 degrees Capricorn, and then it's done, and it officially moves into Aquarius. You know, it's going to move in, in in December of this year and be there for the next, you know, two and a half years. So either way, Mars moving forward in your fourth house. This is about home life, okay, home uh, family. If you have family going on, one, one, one person said to me last month, you know, I, it's never about, I don't, you know, I don't have family. So it's never, it's just like, well, okay, well, this is home life. You know, your relationship with your home or relationship with your family life, uh, when we're dealing with the fourth house. Okay. So we have four momentum and action happening with the home. And a lot of people are at home right now. And if you do have a family and you're dealing with, with your family being at home, maybe you're a, a mother or a father um, that's taking care of some kids and your kids are home this month, right? So there's certainly like Mars is, is action. It can also be aggravated, okay? Aggravated action, okay? And that's part of dealing with the shadow side, uh, Jupiter and Pluto conjunction learning our shadow that's going to happen three times this year the first one is happening this week the first week of april so then you know mars is going to be pushing forward through that home sector the fourth house right and and how you are being tender how you're being caring how you're being nurturing how you're being empathetic how well you're taking care of the home space um, being active and, and cleaning, taking care of it, and especially if we have this time kind of off, you know, it's a great time for spring cleaning and getting a lot of things around the house done. Okay, Mars is your helper to help you do that right now. On the third of the month, okay, right off the gate, we have Neptune-Mercury conjunction here in your fifth house. Okay, this is really strong as this is, you know, a planet of communication, your planet of dreams and imagination coming together as one. You know, you're a storyteller. You are uh, one who is able to really um, communicate about the depths, about the spiritual 
essence of life. Okay, this is a really powerful uh, conjunction that's happening here on the third. As well on the third, Venus is moving, you know, again, this is probably still going to be in your in your seventh house for a minute here. Um, but Venus is moving out of Taurus, out of her home sign of Taurus, into Gemini. And Venus will retrograde in May, but not in April. In April, it's all forward momentum. Okay, so now we're transiting your eighth house. What's mine? What's yours? If we're starting a business, uh, if we're in a continued business, if you're dealing with other people and your resources and how those resources are split amongst individuals. Okay, um, Venus being the planet of money, being the planet of wants, love, and desires. Um, being Gemini, it's a lot of information. Okay, a lot of information, same as like, you know, the third house here. Um, we have to look at all the information and take everything into account as we're divvying things up, as we're dividing, as we're signing paperwork, which is quite fine to do. There's really no retrogrades this month until the 25th. Pluto's going to retrograde. On the 25th, it's going to station retrograde for two days, 25th, 26th. Then on the 27th, at 25 degrees, it's going to start its retrograde for the next six months. Everything else, though, is moving forward, okay? Uh, but that's later on in the month. Now, we do have a Libra full moon. For you, that's going to be your 12th house, all right? So we're going to have the sun in your sixth house, which is about the work that you're doing, highlighting the work that you're doing you know, what are you doing with your time right now? And, and the moon being in your 12th house saying, this is karma. This is, this is um, not only karmic, but a spiritual lessons and endings of something, okay? And it's an emotional need. This is going to be one of the brightest full moons. I think the brightest full moon of the year. It happens at 1035 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay, um, on the 7th. All right, so this full moon, on one side you got work, sun. What is the work that I'm putting out there for everybody else? You know, Aries, um, being the spark, taking the initiative to doing something. Okay, that's really, really strong, really powerful. It's not waiting for something to come to you. It's you saying, I, you know, if there isn't community, I want community, and I'm going to create this community. I'm going to create the Patreon channel. I'm going to create the YouTube channel. I'm going to create the Facebook group messenger i'm going to create the facebook uh group chat or you know what i mean what not not necessarily facebook but uh, the zoom zoom excuse me is what i was looking for the zoom uh chat rooms or something like that you know to get like-minded individuals together okay so the work that you're putting in there is is what you're doing it's your passion it's your fire it's your heart it's your drive Okay, um, and, and an emotional need to come to a completion thinking that you, Scorpio, um, hidden, you know, hidden agenda water sign, um, isn't in the forefront of your life creating the authority that you need to create. You know, we have all of this, coming back to the chart, all this authoritative stuff going on down here. Information, information, information. What's right, what's wrong, what's up, what's down, what's left, what's right. You know, it can be kind of confusing right now. You know, this virus thing going on, how serious is it really? You know, do you believe the media? Do we not believe the media? Certainly, there's, it's a tragic time. There's no question. But yet, yeah, there's some other weird driving force. So it's like coming to an end here and being able to balance it out and figure it out for yourself on, on where to go, what to do, uh, how to navigate, okay? And again, Mercury leaving your fifth house here self-expression mercury conjunct neptune my creative self-expression i can speak my dreams i can speak my mind i can you know create this in the manifestation both creating an awesome you know septile over here to jupiter and to pluto expand create expand you know uh, and then mercury moving in here to your sixth house is saying like let's go forward let's create this work let's do what we got to do that's again on the 12th then on the 19th the sun's going to enter Taurus, okay, which is going to be entering your seventh house. Love, partnerships, okay, if you're in a committed romantic relationship, this is a favorable time for you, okay, uh, to dive deeper and to have stability with your partner, which is something I strongly recommend um, in all relationships right now, especially because in May we have a Venus retrograde. 
you know. So, so this month, as, as the sun enters your seventh house of partnerships, and it's in the stable earth sign of Taurus, okay, it's really good to be grounded. It's good to open up the communication. And Mercury can be very, you know, as it's been stuck and slow and, and undefinitive, you know, like we can't really figure out what's what right now. Um, or communication can be muted or, or lost in translation between ourselves, our friends, our lover, whatever. Um, when Mercury enters Aries from the 12th to the 27th, you know, this is fast. It's fast reaction, silver tongue, you know, quick, quick communication, quick thinking, quick responses, maybe before we think something through. Okay. So the sun entering the seventh house here about your relationships with other people, be it business partnerships or lovers or whomever, whatever. Uh, it's a good time to really go slow, go easy, right? We got a, a new moon on the 22nd there in your seventh house new moon new beginning a new beginning for love new opportunities uh to work with people again this isn't just about romantic love or finding a new love you know um but it's it's in that relationship sector of, of me self first house the other seventh house and of course you we really only associate um that we're talking about in this is the ones that we love it's not it's not about authoritative figure you know not about capricorn um, not about the boss. This is about our close and personal loves. Um, could be our best friends. So again, make sure that, that, that communication is open and thorough and stable and easy going as uh, we're going to hit that retrograde, Venus retrograde next month, which causes a bit of feathers to hit the fan, right? So... Um, then the sun, you know, we, so we got the new moon here in Taurus on the 22nd. Then on the 26th, the sun is going to conjunct Uranus. Now, the moon is exalted in this, in, in Taurus. The moon is exalted. So sun, moon, exaltation, it's, an, it's a great time. Okay, then we have the planet of instability, the planet of release. Okay, Uranus in your seventh house here, and that's going to be in your seventh house for the next six years. Okay, so there's breakthroughs. We always look at this as breakthroughs. Some kind of breakthrough is happening, especially with this new moon. It could This could be your sixth house. This could be your seventh house, again, depending where you're at here in this chart. Um, but either way, we have emotional stability. We have the sun saying, I want stable stability. I want stable finances. I want stable income. And then you've got the wild card in the deck, <laughs> you know, um, that's saying we've got to shake things up. We, you know, what, what we're used to, maybe we might not ever go back to that life. You know, it's not saying we won't, but we have to look at all the possibilities. Um, and this also being in Taurus it is about money, you know, uh, breakthroughs in money. So this could be an opportunity for you maybe with a partner to make money, to figure out a way to make money. Okay, so this is a very powerful month. Again, there's not a ton of astrological transits and aspects going on. Um, follow along for the dailies. You know, if you're new to the channel, there's I, I, I do this every single day, and I dive way deeper into all of these little aspects because it's like talking about all of this in a monthly video is a bit too much and, you know, steers from the point. Um, so this is just your, you know, your general overall. Uh, but those dailies, I'll, I'll, I'll dive a lot deeper into this. Um, so definitely check it out, follow along, have an easy going month, the best that you can, you know, <laughs> it's as best as you can, you know, new opportunities are coming up, um, you know, not being too aggravated by being idle at home as Mars is transiting your fourth house, you know, if we're stuck at home and in this quarantine and saying i'm going stir crazy you know this is an opportunity right now to to kind of ease into it and figure out what can i start to do to plan the future what can i start to do work wise that i can that's going to keep me busy that's something that i enjoy doing uh in this time um that keeps me busy and it's something i can give back to humanity it's something very important because sixth house where mercury and neptune are meeting up early in the month is all about the work that you're giving back to others right so have a beautiful month of april and we'll see you tomorrow